Will I be able to be in more than one place at a time? Is there anything communication technology can't achieve? How much innovation does my company need? Can you really see the future? Get the spirit of tomorrow. Siebit, March 2005 in Hanover, Germany. The world's leading ICT event. An exceptional meeting of thinkers, entrepreneurs, and power brokers. Exclusive interviews, expert analysis of the world's major challenges, plus unique access to the global decision makers. The World Economic Forum 2005, from the 27th of January on CNBC Asia. Brought to you by the Citigroup Private Bank. At CNBC, the news isn't all business. I'm Fazia Ibrahim taking you through the international headlines. Every hour, on the hour. Just getting news coming in. We bring you up to date with the latest global headlines. Japan and North Korea have kicked off talks of Pyongyang's... Regional Japan. news and sports. For the man who is going to try to stay... All day, every day. I have come here to thank you and to promise you that your sacrifices are not in vain. For all the news and news, choose CNBC. Profit from it. The future is now. You have to have a controversial strategy. We are changing the way people listen to music. Breaking out PC paradigm and bringing it into a mobile paradigm. Dramatically more advanced. Unbelievable. Your vital link to the digital frontier to what's shaping the tech world. Stay in touch, stay ahead. Generation E, weekends on CNBC Asia. Welcome back to Asia Market Wrap. A quick recap of the main business headlines this afternoon. Japanese stocks have closed at their highest level for six months. Toyota and the other car makers have been leading the gains. There's optimism about increased sales in the key global markets. Mitsubishi Motors is said to be in talks with the French automaker Peugeot about a possible tie-up. And an export, export growth in China is surging. December numbers came in a little slower growth than before, but still strong. Consumers in the US and Europe are buying more computers and other Chinese-made goods. Now, how China's economy shapes up in 2005 is going to be a key question uh, concerning the health of Asia's and the rest of the world's economies. Beijing is looking still to engineer a soft landing in its economy. Key sectors are still showing some signs of overheating, but while it is prepared to change its investment and interest, interest rate policies, Beijing has so far looked reluctant to revalue the currency despite strong international pressure. CNBC's Cheng Lei reports from Shanghai. China's economy has not been this hot since 1993, when the regime was forced to slam the brakes to halt runaway inflation. Today, the government has a lot more at stake and officials are a lot more deliberate in attempting to engineer a soft landing. No easy task for such an unwieldy economy, but essential for both economic and social stability and for the Chinese stock market. In 2004, authorities raised interest rates for the first time since the 93 crisis. And they restricted investment in overheated sectors such as real estate, steel and cement. We've certainly seen some slowdown in the Chinese economy, but I think the question is whether we've had enough of that slowdown or do we need more? I think we would need to see more moderation in fixed asset investments as well as the improvement in quality of investment in 2005 in order to improve the sustainability of growth in China. Beijing and independent analysts, including the Asian Development Bank, forecast GDP growth to slow to 8% in 2005 from about 9.3% in 2004. There is one lever the government refuses to shift to slow its economy, despite intense international pressure, and that is to strengthen the currency, the renminbi, to slow exports. The Chinese currency is considered by economists to be significantly undervalued. 
In the first 11 months of 2004, China accumulated a surplus of nearly $21 billion, with trade surpassing the $1 trillion mark for the first time ever. Stunning numbers that are likely to grow this year as quotas on textiles and garments disappear. But that could prove a burden on China's economy in 2005. The exchange rate is contributing to a huge surplus of cash in the system, something that could lead to higher inflation. I think the key thing to watch there is the Chinese inflation rate. If the Chinese inflation rate goes up above 5 or 6% and stays there, then I think China will take a lot more seriously this question of revaluation. My sense of the Chinese inflation rate down to 25 to 3%, there is a lot less likelihood that we'll see a revaluation in, in the RMB anytime soon. How Beijing manages its economy in 2005 will also impact mainland stocks, which generally underperformed in 2004, and analysts are mostly bullish. Once the market um, realizes that there will be no hard landing, that the um, policymakers will manage to slow the economy um, gently, I think that the market will rebound. So I think that uh, the Chinese equity markets, especially as the revaluation of renminbi is nearing, which will increase the value of investments in uh, renminbi denominated shares in uh, the Shanghai A index and Shenzhen A index, um, I think this can be a good place to invest. Analysts recommend investors look for stocks covering sectors benefiting from the country's relentless drive towards industrialization. Uh, China is expanding like it has never done in its history. And China is a huge country with over one billion people. And as more and more people move towards the big towns, the big cities, they will have to connect up the whole country. And infrastructure is going to do really well. I think retail sector is going to do really well because of the sheer number of people. I believe energy is going to do incredibly well. Chen Lei for CNBC. Well, the future of China is obviously going to be very important for Hong Kong. We're going to continue our Invest 2005 series with a look at Hong Kong, in particular the IPOs that are coming up this year. It's expected to be another banner year for listings in the territory. PricewaterhouseCoopers says companies may come to the market with a value of around 138 billion Hong Kong dollars, about 18 billion US dollars in listings this year. That would be a 45 increase, 45 percent increase from 2004. Well, topping the territory's IPO list will be the REIT that was delayed from last year, the link, and China's state-owned banks also coming to the market. Philip Chan is research director with Shenyin Wangguo Securities. He joins us from Hong Kong. Philip, nice to see you again. Um, the picture in Hong China. Kong right now is, is going to be, uh, is looking interesting. I mean, the list of uh, uh, securities lined up for IPO is a very China-heavy list there, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Uh, the, well, some of them, some of, some of the, even some of the banking stocks were slated, if you remember, to list. Uh, last year, but uh, they had to be delayed until this year. And even with this year, it's not that clear when, when they're going to list. Um, because they had to do some further refinements for the listing and um, maybe, you know, get the, the, get the operations in shape. Mm. Um, so, I, I, but uh, I think that um, it will continue as we go forward to, to um, be very top heavy towards, uh, sl I mean, slated towards PLC companies because that's where the uh, the the um, the market is uh, in terms for new listings has, has uh, in, the, in has industries you know which are not yeah just, has sentiment in, been in damaged at all has there been any uh, I don't know any uh, any particular changes to the lineup and to perhaps the the, the way things are being done right now after that uh, debacle last year with the link mm. uh, no the link I mean the link was a uh, uh, again was a just like the CAO case was a was a you know a unique in uh, a unique circumstance if you like, um, uh, so we don't expect there will be any major differences to the way um, the listings go forward for okay. the Chinese companies. Yeah. So uh, of the list uh, of uh, IPOs that are slated so far, tell us what you like. Tell us what's there that's interesting. Yeah. Well, we we like uh, particularly. Um, uh, some of the sectors that we like are uh, like uh, uh, consumer products, um, uh, consumer products related companies, and uh, even the petrochemicals. Um, there's there's one or two slated for for this year, mm -hmm. and um, property property related companies. 
Um, well, there's a few the, of those, right? The, there's, about, um, there's about four lined up in the property sector. Yes, mm. yes. Um, you know, we, we, I think for selected, uh, you know, for the companies which are focused on certain areas or have got a certain niche, then they, they can be looked at. Um, per, per se, the property sector in, in China, um, if, if you're looking at the very hot areas, uh, is, is, is probably going to continue to cool down a bit. But uh, certain areas are still okay. Um, uh, you know, uh, Zhejiang uh, being one province we, uh, you know, that we're quite like. Right. Um, so this sector we like, uh, petrochemicals, as I said, even, even some, some of the companies within the basic industries, um, All right. we, uh, yeah. We, we, we we've, like. got, we've got three banks um, lined up, China Construction Bank, Mingsheng Bank, and the Bank of Communications. Um, mm. Mm. What, what do you think, what do you think that the sentiment is towards the banking sector in China right now? And do you, have any of those, are you particularly interested in any of them? No, I think that uh, the, um, the banks themselves look, look quite interesting. Um, I think that uh, foreign investors will will be keen to get uh, some. Uh, they'll, they'll have keen interest in some of these shares, mm. if only to have uh, you know to have a holding in a in a, a large listed uh, PRC bank. Um, the, the 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 ongoing internal restructuring um, that's going on at these companies, um, you know, is an ongoing process, and right. so um, you know we 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 just we we think that there's sort of both uh, investable and also strategic uh, industries that uh, investors want to be inv uh, involved in. So um, we, we expect that they will be reasonably well received. Very quick, uh, very quick answer, Philip. Uh, 2005 going to be a good mm. year for Hong Kong. Uh, we we <laughs> yeah we think it's going to be a reasonably good year. Um, but you know we always like to temper investors and in saying that there's always going to be down down months within the year, yeah. like we had last year. All right. um, so don't expect too much for, okay. throughout the whole year anyway. All yeah. right, we'll leave Great. it there. Thanks a lot for talking to us today, Philip. Philip Chan with uh, Shenyin Wangguo Securities in Hong Kong. After this break, we'll talk more about Japan. The uh, sole ailing car maker in that market is said to be trying to sort its problems with a possible tie-up with France's Peugeot. Some analysts say that still will...